So we are in Parashat Mishpatim, and we know in Parashat Mishpatim, the way it starts, it's a little shocking. In, in the Zohar, it starts like that. Parashat Mishpatim, Amar Patach Abish Shimon, Vela Mishpatim Vesher Tassim Lefnehem, Tirgun Veilan Dina Tesader Kadmon, Elan Inun Sidurin De Gilugala, Denin De Neshpatim, De Danu Kol Chad Vechad Lekabel Onshe. So the first verse starts in a weird way. It says, Rabbi Shimon open and say, this is the, the reincarnation order. This is all the reincarnation order. This is the laws and regulation about the soul that keep coming back to this world. Why? Because it's based on what punishment they have to go through. So first we understand here that the whole idea of reincarnation has to do with the punishment. Meaning us being here, us coming back to this world, is basically we've been punished. If you are here and you are alive and you seem to be alive and chewing and eating, which is a good thing, that's when you've been punished. Welcome to the punishment land. So basically everybody is coming to this world, has been punished. We just need to know why we've been punished. What have we done in a different lifetime, in a previous lifetime, that we end up with a situation like that. That's what the Zohar mostly talking about. Before we go in there, Rabbi Lebelech of Lijensk, right in his beginning of his book on Parashat Mishpatim, is saying that the joy of a human being has to be based on the understanding or the connection to the Creator. And it's called Lishma. And we need to understand what it means. What does that really mean, Lishma, for its own sake, or for its own connection? And it's explained, Rabbi Lebelech explained, you know, when you get closer to the Creator, to the Divine, how happy you are. Are you happy you get closer to the Divine so you can get what you want? Or are you just happy to get closer to the Creator because I'm happy to get closer to the Creator? To understand that concept, we had a dog once. That dog was very unique. That dog only liked to play with the, with the, with the, with, with the ball. So instead of eating, the, the dog want to play with me, the ball. So with the ball, the, the food is on the side. Hey, you know, the food, it doesn't care for the food, just playing with me, which is, those of you who had dog, that's rare. It doesn't usually happen. The dog going after the food. And I'm asking myself, how much joy that, that caused me that I can actually play with the dog? Can you imagine a dog that just get out of the couch when you put the food and then go back to sleep and get out of the couch, want to eat, and then go to sleep? So the Tikkun Azor write that, that a person, a human, you know, when they pray to God doing Yom Kippur or doing Rosh Hashanah, has to be careful not to fall into that category of dog. Now, why Dafka dog? Why they say dog? Because dog, the way the dog bark is have, have. Have in Hebrew is give me, give me. So we have to be careful our relationship to God. A lot of time when we pray to God, when we connect to God, we are maybe praying, we might put fill in, we might do a blessing over the candle, over the challah. It's good, it's, I'm not saying it's bad. It's better than nothing. But what is my reasoning? What is my, my goal here for praying to God? Am I praying to God so I can get what I want when I want it and I want it now? Why well, I'm praying to God so he can help me actually to get closer to the source of energy that call God. That's a question we have to ask ourselves. Is your goal truly to connect to the Creator? Or your good is to connect the Creator so you can get what you want. So that's the difference between Lishma and Lo Lishma. This is the all different. So if we look at the Gilgulim, so we have to read now, it's going to be heavy a little bit. So I'm preparing you tonight. It's going to be heavy because we only talk about punishment and we're only talking about reincarnation. For that reason, this is not the easy subject to digest. So when we when we read, uh, you will see how, how it's going to go. And I'm thinking like, where should I start? Maybe I should start with something which will be easy, and then after it will be easy, we can we can going in to whatever it needs. And and remember, it might feel like I'm changing subject every time because it's a lot of content, and I'm just changing subject. The Zohar Mishpatim, there is a section in Zohar Mishpatim written by it's the section called Sabbat Mishpatim. It's by the Rabbi named Rabbi Imnuna Saba. The reason they call him Rabbi Imnuna Saba because Nuna. Nuna in, in Aramit, whoever speaks Aramit, is fish. And the reason they call it Nuna, Rabbi Nuna Saba, because he's swimming in the ocean of the Torah. 
So that's Rabbi Imnuna Saba. So within the Zohar of Parashat Mishpatim, you have all the secret, all the secret of Gilgul and Neshamot. So here we go. We're going to start with the, with the fun one, because if I start with the heavy one, you're not going to listen to me. <laughs> so I got to make sure that uh, I'm starting with something that, uh, that will be easy on, for you to handle with. Let me start with Resh Kavchet, and then I'm going to go to what I want to share with you. So, uh, you know, the public speaker always is about motivate the crowd. Don't make sure they don't get depressed. So we have to motivate you, can make you go depressed. So let's start with that. So the Zohar, <coughs> again, it's those of you who listen to me on the camera, it's not a regular lecture. I know every week I motivate you. Tonight I have to give you content. And because I have to give you content, it's going to be a little bit heavy, but it's a good content that you can stay with you for a long time. I mean, Resh Kafchet in the Zohar Mishpatim, Ma'amar Saba. Okay, Lamadu, we study. En davar ba'olam ha'omed lifne tshuva. En davar ba'olam ha'omed lifne tshuva. So there is nothing that stands uh, uh, toward or against tshuva. Ve'lekulam ha'kadosh baruchu v'adai mekabel. And the creator accepts every human being. V'im shav betshuva, im, he put a condition word, im, if the person shav betshuva, because they see a lot of people that were not religious when they're young, and when then they become religious, and they call themselves Baal Tshuva. Baal Tshuva. So that's a big madriga, that's a very elevated skill to become Baal Tshuva. To do Choser B'Tshuva, it's good. Choser B'Tshuva, you're still making it. Every day you're going up, you're going down, you're going up, you're going down. There's a big difference between Baal Tshuva and Choser B'Tshuva. V'im Shav B'Tshuva, Remezuman Lo Derech HaChaim, if a person is changing his path, is the part of life is for him. What about the damage that that person did? Everything can be fixed. And everything fixing itself. Even there is a swear, there is like a promise, there is a nether that the, that the Kadosh Baruch will not accept that person. It's accepting him. It's accepting him. Meaning all the places in the Torah that been mentioned that that person will not be accepted to Tshuva will be said the Zohar. Okay? Mikan shat Tshuva meshaberet kama gzerot vedinim kama shachot el barzel ben li shomed lifnei Tshuva. So now we have a deal. We have lishma and lo lishma. Lo lishma, we now found the trick. I can do whatever I want. And then I do Tshuva and I'm clean. That's lo lishma. That's when I'm doing it for the wrong reason. A different way, me and the Creator has issues. I'm not behaving according to what the Creator, creator created me to do. So I want to go back to my Father. I want to go back to behave better. I want to change. I want to become a better human being. That type of tshuva work. Do you want a relationship with the Creator or you want the benefit from having a relationship with the Creator? If you only want the benefit of the relationship having with the Creator, then the tshuva is not the tshuva. Because you're not really care if you're changing. You're changing because you know there is benefit in the change. Of course I'm going to change. Of course I'm going to be better. Lama lo? Yeah. If I'm changing, they're going to forgive me. They're going to reward me. I mean, I mean. But if the tshuva coming from a place of sharing, not from a place of receiving. Not from a place of receiving. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Every time. People become religious. What's in it for me? People become spiritual, what's in it for me? That's not spirituality. That's not religion. Spirituality begins, what's it not for me? Where is my portion go to the other person? Where I'm losing a new gain. But unfortunately, it's not attractive. Who will be finding themselves get closer to a product that you lose and they get? Even a rabbi. I mean, the rabbi. Hey, we have a new rabbi job. Welcome to our synagogue. In this synagogue, the people will humiliate you, but you will become a tzaddik. Would you, would you like to come? By the way, the money is really bad here, but we would like to sign you as a rabbi here. Uh, can, can I think about it? So the human bra brain, the way we function, as Rav Ashlag, Bala Sulam, right? The way we function is all day long, we acting with three words. Ratzon, Shel, Atzmo. In Hebrew, meaning ratzon, desire, shell, belong, le'atzmo, meaning of himself, which is initial of the word rasha. 
So when you word the right Rasha, when you word the right Rasha, okay, here you can come back, it doesn't bother. So you have Ratzon, Shel, Atzmo, okay? <coughs> Meaning his own desire, egoism. So when you want to do tshuva, the main idea of tshuva is not about the act you did. You stole $5 from someone, okay? You stole $10, or you did worse thing than that. Now you want to do tshuva. Ah, I want to do tshuva. I want to do tshuva. What the tshuva? Yes, the Arizal already write in Sharuach HaKodesh, those of you who have the book, tshuva for everything you did. You did that, that's the tshuva. You did this, that's the tshuva. You did that, that's the tshuva. You have tshuva for everything. Everything has a tshuva. But why you want to do the tshuva? <laughs> What's your purpose? Is your purpose of doing the tshuva? I'm clean now. Now I can get whatever I want. Or I want to do the tshuva because I'm tired of being just selfish. I don't want to be selfish anymore. That's a true tshuva. I don't want to be selfish. I don't like being selfish. It doesn't matter the size of my yamaka and the size of my beers and the payos. I don't want to be selfish. I want to be a better human being. And I'm trying and it's not working. How many of us fighting the selfish side of us and it's, we're not making it. We're not making it. We climb, we crash. We climb, we crash. We climb, we crash. So for that reason, Mishum ze, Adam ze afalpi she pasha bo, u pagam be makom she lo tzarich, be shav lefanav, u mekablo ve barachem alav. If the person damaged a place, it shouldn't be damaged. Because the person shav elav, come back to Hashem, saying Hashem, I'm not, just a shame for the wrong thing I did. I am want to help me to become a better human being. I want to be nicer to people around me. I want to be a giver. So when you change, let's say you decide tonight to do tshuva or something, look in how better you will be with society. Not how good you will be for yourself. For that reason, Hillel, Rabbi Akiva, okay? Shmaya and Naftalion, they all talk about one little mitzvah that we skip over that. Love the neighbor as thyself. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna know if you're growing spiritually or you're crashing. One way, are you doing with people? Don't tell me about your relationship to God. Don't, don't tell me about it, please. Okay, don't tell me. You know, as I tell people, you know, there is people who love to go to righteous people tomb. You know, righteous people tomb. It's called Kivret Sadikim. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. To go to the, you have a stone. It's usually Morocco, Poland, Ukraine, and Israel. That's usually the four location. I say, ah, I'm going to Kivret Sadikim. I said, that's easy. So why is easy? It was snowstorm in Ukraine. It was this and it was that. I said, that tzaddik can never run away from you. Where is he going to run? He's stuck there in the ground. You're coming, you know, it doesn't make you a tzaddik. It doesn't make you a tzaddik. He, he, the tzaddik says, oh, not this guy again. Ah. You know, what are you going to do? So people come after they go to tzaddikim, they go like this. Ah, I did it, I did it. Oh, let me tell you, I said, Kaddish. We did barbecue, it was good. Rabbi Shmaron, da 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 But in the, did they want you there? They can, can they put a sign, please leave? No, no, it was never. And that's the reason we need to work. If you want to know if you're growing spiritually, is how you're doing with people. If you're still not doing well with people, you're not doing good with the Creator. People is the way to indicate. That's mitzvah of after Hakamura. It's the way you indicate you're going up, you're going down. It's the only way. You can put extra tefillin, Rabbein Utam, Rashi, those of you know what I did. Shemusha Rabba, if you heard of that tefillin. You put it all. You put the special talit. Oh, it's what an etrog. $2,000 etrog. Did you take that etrog and give it to somebody else? No? Then you didn't do a lot. You just bought extra money etrog. This is where it's indication of how you're doing. Same thing with your children, with your wife, with your husband, with your neighbor, the same, same thing. That's how you check how you're doing. So if you come to do tshuva, why is Hashem male Why is Hashem full of mercy on us? You know why? Hashem set up an example for us. There is something called the 13 attribute, the Shlosre Midot. What is it called? Shlosre Midot Rachamim. Yud Gimel Midot Rachamim. This 13 Midot of Rachamim. Rachamim. If you're not capable to be mochel, mochel meaning uh, uh, to forgive someone, uh, to, to really mochel somebody who bother you, there is no room for anything because you're stuck in the past. You're sitting on the ground and you say, why my life is not changing? And you're sitting in that basket that's called hot air balloon and you have a sack of sand that you have to let go, but you can't because you don't want to forgive nobody. And you're stuck, no mechila. 
That person bothered me in this synagogue, I'm not going anymore. The other person bothered me in the other shul, I'm not going. And uh, Ashkenazi shul, no Moroccan, no Syrian, no this, no, no, no. You know what? I'm going to create my own shul. And then you have Baruch Hashem, thousand shul. Every shul have 12 people. Very nice, right? And everybody is saying, you have a boy, you have a boy. Did you give birth to a boy? Oh, Mazal Tov, the community is growing. But it, it's not unity. It's, we're not getting the unity. Am Israel have to understand, we got to do mechila, mechila to one another. We're going to hurt each other. Doesn't matter what you're going to do. People will hurt you and you're going to hurt them. That's path. That's called life. But at least somebody hurt you, mochel, mochel. I'm not forgiving you because I'm special. I'm mochel because I'm stuck on the ground with a hot air balloon and I cannot let go of those sand to fly, to go to the next location. Otherwise, you can move to a different location from New York to Miami, from Miami to this, to then to Baltimore, to, then to Israel, to come back there. And you're running away from who? Running away from the wrong behavior. That's a tshuva. A tshuva is something that lasts forever. היהודים ונודם לשבר את זה מגיע להם רחמה ושורים עליהם ועל זה אמר דוד רבים השם כמשפטך חייני אם על רשעים מגיע רחמה אף כל שקל על צדיקים if God can forgive wicked people of course he can forgive righteous אלא מי צריך רפואה who need the true medicine who need the medicine אלו שהם בעלי כאבים people who has a lot of pain who are who, מי הם בעלי הכאבים מי יש לו כאב? Who has a lot of pain? Who is the person who has the most amount of pain? So look what it's, it's written. It's written, the people בעלי הכאבים, מי הם בעלי הכאבים? אלו הם הרשעים. The רשע has the most amount of כאב. Why is the רשע has the most amount of כאב? We think it's the tzaddik. We, we imagine, I mean, after all, I mean, we've all been affected by Christianity. You like it or you're not. You know, so what we think, do you think, you think a, a, a rabbi should drive a Ferrari or not? What do you think? Lamborghini or Ferrari, if it will be a choice, what would you say? No. Ah, right away, ah, the horse or donkey. I need to be humble, I need to be nobody, maybe a tear in the pants, poor, maybe <laughs> stuff. Um, I can listen to him now. What if the rabbi come with a uh, expensive uh, Versace shirt and uh, Prada jacket, uh, shoes, the best uh, the belt of 2000 and watch the round diamond. Now you start thinking if you're going to listen to that rabbi or not. That's the way we think. That's called Christianity effect on Judaism. In, uh, I'm trying to think of that, that group. I studied that. Uh, the, not the Josephina. The, there is a group. In, the What? There is a group in, in Christianity that they basically believe that we're supposed to be poor. But in Judaism, I don't know if you know, Moses was rich. Did you know that? Abraham was very rich. Did you know that? Isaac was rich too. Did you know that? Did you know? Yaakov Avinu was rich too. Woo. Oh, we got a problem with them. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, King David was very rich. King Solomon was very rich. He was king. Should I continue with that? I continue? I mean, Rabbi Tarfon, you heard about rich. Huh? I mean, continue. I mean, if you go to the Gemara, to the Talmud, to the Mishnayot, but it become, if you're rich, you cannot become spiritual. If you're rich, you cannot become spiritual. I used to be very judgmental when I when I meet. If you can keep the uh, talk down because we are recording. I'm sorry, I will give time for question in about twenty minutes. So, the whole idea, the whole idea of understanding this concept of how we look at people is off. We are off. And we judge people by the look, by how they dress, and so on and so on. It doesn't matter. You want to know a person is only one thing, Rachmanut. The person has Rachmanut or not have Rachmanut. Person have mercy or not have mercy. Person has Mechila or not have Mechila. You meet a person who cannot forgive people, got a problem. I don't care if you have money or you're poor. You can let go. Problem. You want to change? Let go. Just let go of everything. So until now, it was the easy part of the parasha. Now we're going to go to the more part, which is not fun. It's not fun, but it's important to hear it. So you're not going to like the next part. I'm not saying you did like the first one, but uh, I'm going to share this with you. All right. The next part is not my favorite part, too. I mean, it's, it's this week, parasha. You always choose the good one. But malaso tzarek lagit, but tzarek lagit. We have to say what we have to say. So because the old parsha is about reincarnation and the why, because every person has a pain in their life. 
every human being come to this world has to have some pain. If you didn't have some pain, you're missing the point. If you don't have any pain in your life at all, you're, you're making it wrong. There's no such a thing with not having any pain. Either emotional pain, that has to do with the relationship, either money pain, has to do with money, okay? Or either health issue. Those are the three major things that coming from a place in Kabbalah, it's called Mazala. It's something above you, above God, above the touching habitat. It's called Mazala. Something I cannot go into it right now. It's in Beshalach. So, why bad thing happen to people? I don't like to say in the words, why bad thing happen to good people? Can't stand that question. You know why I can't stand that person, that question? Because who's the person who's asking it? And I usually, they come and ask me, I say, are you the good one or are you the bad one? He said, I'm the good one. I say, so bad things are happening to you? I say, yes. So that's why you are the good one, right? You understand how, how that question is misleading? Why bad things happen to good people? Now, second question I want to ask those people, how do you know it's a bad thing? How do you know bad thing is a bad thing? I have a root canal. So I had to go fix my teeth. So a lot of pain. But by going there, I found out I have a bigger problem. It was good news that I have a root canal. So now, is it bad thing or good thing? A lady in King's Highway had an accident. God bless her soul. She had a bad accident. Three days in coma. I come to see her. I say, Eliyahu, you wouldn't believe what miracle happened. So I'd say the miracle. They put you together. Everything is okay. But Hashem said, no. The doctors find that you have a tumor almost the size of a tennis ball in her brain. Without the accident. Nah. So bad things happen. People don't see the whole picture. So they judge. Now, we're standing, as I say, with things, you see me, I'm nervous if I share it with you, so I'm, I'm skipping as much as I can, but I need to share this with you. Okay, so sometimes there is a situation of children that die before their time. No, 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 no. Children that die before their time. We need to address it as a reincarnation because there is no explanation why a child will die either as a baby or whatever happened to us in October 7th, those of you who follow the news, you know, terrible things that 1400, that was not even addressed. 1400 people kidnapped, children been slaughtered. I mean, you, if you're not Israeli, you get basically 10% of the news. I mean, it's not nice to describe it, but terrible thing. So he's asking a question, how can that be? So I ask this question, how can that be? This is children. Again, I'm not here to convince anybody. You're not going to agree with me. You're not going to agree with the Zohar and you're going to leave here angry. I'm preparing you. So I'm not here to make it sweet. I'm just reading, translating, share it with you. So you're not going to be happy right after that. I'm just sharing information. והקדוש ברוך הוא רואה שאם יתקיימו בעולם יבאישו רחם ויחמיצו כחומץ הזה. Again, you're not going to like it. God is watching that soul ahead of a time. Because God doesn't have time. Now, you, can you think no time? You can. Can you think no space? You can. Can you think no, uh, what else is physical? Motions? Like that? That's motion. That's physical. So I'm moving from A to be, that's a space, and it takes me a certain amount of time. Very, very simple, Albert Einstein, right? I mean, this is all concept. So when you think God, you have to think no space and no time. It's not exist. There's no makom. Hashem is everywhere. So if Hashem is everywhere, there's no space. If Hashem is everywhere, then there is no motion because of this. There is no time. So you have to think at that, that level. I know it's tough. If you want, there's a study that you can do online. It's called TLE. Ten Luminous Emanation, or in Hebrew, Talmud Eser Asfirot, for written by Rabbi Yehuda Ashlag HaKadosh, the best study, that will help actually that. It's a complicated study, but it's worth it. Shimit Kaimu, they say if those kids will make it alive, they're not going to make it spiritually. They will be like that bad vinegar. So the Creator is collecting them before they go bad. Now, of course, you have a lot of questions about that. Whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. How, how can he know? Why is he deciding? What about the mother and father? What exactly happened? All in reincarnation, but all. You, we got to see the world as interconnected. There is no such a thing as a one piece. Everything is interconnected. And because there is no time, 
There's no time. Meaning your last lifetime and your next lifetime, if needed, it's already included within this life. I know it can make you crazy. It's difficult to think like that. But from a Kabbalistic point of view, time not exists. If time not exists, it's all one. It's all one. So he continues. I cannot say the, the name of the woman who take them. Uh, those of you know Hebrew, don't say the name at night, please. Lamedud, Lamedud, Taf. Okay, we call her Mrs. L. Okay, we don't say that name. That's the second uh, woman that Adam has in the Garden of Eden. We do not say that name. She's in charge of basically killing children. And the reason she's in charge that we don't let, those of you know the Jewish tradition, we don't let baby laugh alone. Okay, when, when the baby is alone in the crib, if you hear the baby laugh, you wake him up. That's one of the reasons. That's where it's come from. Okay, so so yeah. Yeah, there's tradition. I, I don't know if Sfaradi, Mashkenazim do it. I don't know who's doing it or who's not. But there is tradition that I study from my mom, from my grandmother. You know, children who's, who's laughing, you wake them up uh, if they sleep. If they laugh in their sleep. Okay? Until a certain age. I'm not saying uh, baby, baby. When they still in the breastfeeding time, until two years. Okay? And okay. You're saying to yourself, wait a minute, how do you know? Maybe those children will do good in the world. And no, not true. He's taken this week parasha. He's taken this week parasha. Those of you know the parasha. He's talking about slave. Jewish slave, uh, Kenani, Evet Kenani. What's the rule about the Avadim? That's how the parasha starts. So he's saying, If the maid is bad to her owner, that's a code that doesn't talk about maid. Because the Torah is eternity. Torah is Torah nitzchit, it's forever. So why do we have to read about slave uh, when we don't have slave? Why do we have to read about it? The reason you have to read about it because they don't talk about slave, talk about the soul. A soul that been slave. And כאיש הזה יוחמץ בה לאחר זמן התקיים בה נשמה זו נעשקת ואחר כך אינה נעשקת וכאלה לא קבעו ויירד כל העשוקים והיינו עם רעה בעיני אדוניה. So basically Children that die before the time, so this is a, a result, not that the, the parents uh, is bad or something like that, is that all come from a short visit. Now, of course, people ask a question. What is the parents did? What is the parents did? So Dari, in a different section, not here, Dari explained when the parents basically are the connection is not strong between them. They bring in that soul that anyway will die in their house to wake them up. Maybe they will wake up to find love between them. Some of them separate, some of them love. I'm, as I say, I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to tell you it's good or it's bad. I'm here to share. This is tough lecture. I would not come back if I would be you. Okay, but if you want to hear more, I will continue now. I'm going to now, Nunalef, as I say, I'm going to jump from subject to subject, sharing all kind of information because it's lecture about reincarnation. Why are we here? Okay. So basically it's like that. And I'm, I'm changing. Okay. Changing. All right. Um, what happened to our soul? How did we end up here? See if Nunbet. יש מעין שעתידות להרה דרכם בעולם, בשעה שהגיע הזמן לרן לרדת עולם כל דבר כזה שלו לשמיים, היא אמר לה, לכי בואי במקום פלוני, מגוף פלוני. Before the soul come down, God called the soul, say so I want to have a meeting with you, okay? And he's telling the soul, you're going to go to this body, to this location. השיבה לפניו, the soul usually answer, all the soul answer the same. ריבון העולם, master of the world. די לי עולם הזה שאני יושבת בו, המאמר שלי גוד, I'm doing good here, I'm doing good, why, why, why you send me down here with a body and problem and Uber, arrive, not arrive, טוב, טוב, it's good here in the עולם הנשמות, ולא ילך לעולם אחר, don't want to go, שיעבדו בי ויהיה מלוכלכת ביניהם, that they use my soul and they're going to make my soul dirty, אמר לה הקדוש ברוך הוא, מיום שנברד, על זה נברד לא יעלם בעולם לא ההוא, בגוף, I created you only for one reason, so you can go to the dirty body in this world. So the soul sees that there is no other way and being forced to go into the body. What do we learn from this little section? First, 
We are in a dirty war. So when somebody come and tell you you're full of ego and you get hurt, you're missing it. You're missing something. Somebody tell you you're stupid and you don't understand he's right or she's right, you're missing it. One time they found the Baal Shem Tov in the marketplace. The market, the, the Baal Shem Tov, the famous Baal Shem Tov, the holy Baal Shem Tov, walking in the marketplace. And somebody who didn't like him called him stupid. So he was around him and he stood and he turned and he told him, listen, I agree. I agree. And he looked at his body and said, it's so stupid, body. It's stupid. It's evil. It's selfish. He started talking to himself. He said, but if you talk about my soul, ah, this is a different level. So you can talk about me as much as you want. This, I agree with you. But the soul is a different level. We are two, my friend. And we're always going to be two. We have the soul and we have the body. So who's going to win? Whoever you're going to feed. Are you going to feed your body or are you going to feed your soul? How do you feed the soul? You feed the soul, hopefully, by study. You know, study of Torah not because you become smart intellectually. Be careful. That's called Torah lolishma. Torah to nestalo sama a Torah that is only fulfill your intellectual understanding and you become smart after that and you feel smart after that, you miss the whole Torah and actually it's dangerous for you. It makes the Torah as a drug of death that eventually kill you. How can that be? The Gemara is explaining that there is two ways to a human being. Derech Torah and derech Yisurim. A human being can choose two ways. Either you change your life through Torah study, or you change your life through Yesurim, through suffering. Both, both ways are winning. You're going to win both ways. Either you suffer all your life, or either you study Torah. So people come up with the idea, ah, much better to get a book and study and become smarter, but that's not going to make you win. That's why you see a lot of people study Torah and still have pain, still have problems, still have issues, because the Torah has to be studied in the right way. What is the right way? Ha <laughs> ha! Rabbi Yudha Ashlag, Balasulam, explain like that. When before you study the Torah, you have to put for yourself goals. What is about me that I want to change? Do I have ego? Do I have anger issue? Do I have impatience? What, what is about me? What is not working about me? Me, me, the, the, that system. What am I not achieving? Short temper. In New York, everybody's short temper. I mean, oh, no longer, I think. No longer. Everybody shows, rah, 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 stop sign, rah, half a second, rules, uh, cafe, Starbucks, you want to wait for them, rah, 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 my turn, rah, 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 rah. everybody barking, you know, Baruch Hashem, New York, you know, you got you to show, rah, 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 rah. Everybody, uh, California, you can wait, take your time, look at the ingredients, look at the ingredients, ah, it's uh, gluten free, you know? the guy behind you, take your time, you feel it's come from God, uh, different problem, you know, you fall, you fall asleep, you're lazy, you're, uh, you're rushing. But in the end of the day, you know, if you think about the Torah, Derech Torah, meaning that before you study, you are asking yourself, why am I studying? Like all of you right now sitting here, why are we studying? To become smarter? Because it's a mitzvah? Okay, you're going to get it. You're going to get two points. Or you can study because there is an issue with your personality and you want to change it. If you do not see the issue with your personality and you just study, you missed the whole point. All point. So you can go to synagogue, make an effort, spend money, give some tzedakah, buying some aliyah, study some Torah, finishing Masechet, Gemarot, and then missing the whole point. Or you can study not that much, but say, Hashem, master of the world, I'm struggling. I'm jealous. I have jealousy issue. I can't help it. So I'm going to study this Torah today. I'm going to read this Tehillim today. And through the light of the Torah, Machzirola Butav, you're going to help me change. This you're allowed to do. That's Lishma. Why is it Lishma Shala Torah? But if you study just to become smarter, it's good. It's called Lolishma. It's also Lolishma, Lishma, meaning it's okay. It's still okay, but it's not going to benefit you as much as Torah Lishma. So this is the idea of understanding that kids, unfortunately, gone, sometimes before their time, for a reason. Then the soul, when the soul coming as a reason, why? Because it says, When you start to study Torah, there is a spice in the Torah, Tavlin. And that spice, when it touches your soul, what happened to you, what happened to you, you start becoming a better human being. And the Torah itself 
is slowly, slowly going to change. Please remember that. I would like to talk in the next subject. It's called Black Widow. You know what the Black Widow is? Oh, you didn't know it's come from here, right? The whole idea of Black Widow is from this section. Haha. <laughs> Everything about reincarnation. You want to know? I'm going to share. You don't want to know? I'm going to share anyway. So, <laughs> so, so it's like this. שאר אנשים שבעולם הנפטרים, about people who die. רוח שלו שעזב באישה ההיא, שהייתה לו, ורוח הביא שם בביאה הראשונה, מה נעשה מרוח ההוא אם נישאת אישה ההיא, אף כן מה נעשה מרוח ההוא שעזב בבעלה הראשון, שהרי איש אחר בא עליה. What happened when a woman is a widow, her husband die, and the new husband is with her right now. What, what to do with that? He said, well, if her first husband was her soulmate, we're going into it out to know that, and the second husband is not, second husband has to die. Has to die. Must. Not even maybe. So the first husband was the soulmate. He's still with her. He will not let nobody, nobody, even think about it. It's a lit kaim wachim wach lo efshak. It's not going to work. So people think when, when people sleep, you know, make love, they think it's make love. Today, make love, big deal. According to the Arizal, making love at three levels. Hug, the lowest. Second one is the actually intercourse. And what's the highest? You would be surprised. Kiss. Kiss consider the highest intercourse that exists in Kabbalah, which we believe it's impossible. It's not true. No. The, the Arizal right in kiss you exchange souls. I'm talking about not on the cheek, uh, you know, in the mouth. When ever la it's called. So the spirit of the soul of you go to them, and their soul go to you. So please be careful who you kissing. I mean, I don't know who you kissing. I'm sorry. I mean, I gotta tell you, the kiss itself is exchange of neshamot. It's exchange. You're exchanging thing. But we look at the world in a physical way. So we think sex is a physical thing. Kiss is a physical thing. Hug is a physical thing. No. The Zohar talking about Ruach. After they make love, or after they, 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 they've been together for a while, a Ruach, meaning the spirit of the first man, is inside of her. Never left. What is a isha? What is a woman? What is a woman? Isha. What is according to the Zohar isha? Isha is like a kli. Isha is like a, a vessel. A vessel. A vessel. She's receiving the energy. Receiving the energy. That's why a woman, I, 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 I've been with the uh, a woman came to see me, she want to get married. So we talk, I said, okay, ma baya, you're professional, you look good, you're smart, I call it a perfect woman. Say, but I can't I can find the right man in New York, I'm a strong woman, and the women in New York lately are weak. I said, no, they're not weak, you just need to find the right, there's a strong man, powerful, chachamim, and then, and the man of New York is the best. No, they're weak. So I said, how do you solve it? So, well, I have, I have uh, three uh, dates. When I go on a date on Thursday, usually, she do three or four dates. I said, how can you do four dates in, uh, in Thursday? Oh, my mother, uh, we're, 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 date is a date. Think about it. One day. So, no, no, no. So, Leah, we have four levels. So, okay, what's the four level? So, the four level is the first one is a certain time, I guess, 5.30 or 6 is the drink. Drink one drink with the first date. Second date is the... Uh, antipasto, true story. Antipasto, like more, you know, salad, uh, like hors d'oeuvre. And the third is the dinner. The one she's sure about is the dinner. And then there is dessert. There is dessert. My question, maybe being not so smart, I say, how do you remember their names? How does how that work? So it's divided by dinner, by dessert, by this, by that. So I told her, it's not going to work. She get it so angry with me. I said, oh, no, I'm going to work. And I showed that mama I said, when you meet a man, a ruach, the spirit of that man is with you. It doesn't matter if you just didn't sleep. You, you have a meal together, you have connection, something is going on. It's not strong, but it's still there. It's hanging there. It's hanging. When you're going to meet that, you're not going to have the full you because you are a vessel. 
the vessel, it takes about 48 hours for that vessel, just by conversation to a man. That's why it says, Al Tarbe, Sichai Maisha. The Mishnah say, do not talk to a woman for too long. Because when you talk to a woman too long, it's not for the man, actually, it's for the woman. If a man starts talking to you, you don't even know that you've been manipulated spiritually. Because he's talking and talking and it stays with you. If it's a talk, not a talk, romantic talk, not a, a, I would say like a cool talk. Hey, I like you. You're amazing. Blah, 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 blah. Oh my God, I love this. I love that. It's actually going inside your vessel and it stay. And it stay for 48 hours. You've got to be careful. So you're dating now another man. And now those two ruchot start fighting inside your vessel. Be careful. Take a break, 48 hours. Shalom Aleichem. I'm talking to nobody. I don't want compliment. I don't want anything. Let me empty myself from, from compliment for a second. Then after 72 hours, you're ready. Go date again. No problem. But Lizaire, to be careful with that. Most people think the la giver. It's for the woman. She is the one who gets confused. She is the one who stays with the damage. And of course, I'm not even talking about sexuality. You know, sex becoming a thing like uh, after sex, people ask, hey, what was your name, by the way? You know, people don't even know what's going on with who and who. And, uh, mm -hmm. and Baruch Hashem with the uh, Jewish invention called Tinder. Those of you who heard of that, invented by a wonderful Jew, uh, a friend of mine. I don't know if you listen to me. Okay, ask him, why did you do that, Sally? Oh, I was shy, so I had to invent something. You know, what I thought. So sex become a thing. But the problem with sex, it stay with you. 40 days, all the women, so you get ready, 40 days, 40 days, 40 days for women. So I know some women have like two guys, and uh, since I come to New York, I find a lot of tradition that I didn't know exist even, and I'm, I'm not young, so I know it all, but this is a unique thing. Don't date two guys, don't, for all the women, whoever listen to me, don't date two guys at the same time, don't. It's bad for you, it's not bad for him. Okay, please remember that. It's not bad for you, for, for him. it's bad for you. You stay with the energy. And you learn it from here. So, in Ilon is set, So the widow now. If the widow is not get married, what happened to the spirit of her father, as the Zohar? If you say it's gone, and no can, can be. Spirit never going to be gone. Call the tzarich legalot ata. We have to reveal that secret. Again, whatever I share with you, again, I'm not here to motivate you. I'm repeating it 20 times. I'm here to share with you the truth from the Zohar. You do with it whatever you want. It's not a pleasant thing to listen to. So they talk to Rabbi Nuna Saba and say, shame on you, you old man. Look what you're getting into. It's a big secret thing. So why, why you want to do that? Why you want to do that? And he continue. And he continue. And it say, how can we tell a secret like that? And then he, he starts. When the father of the father is coming, he brings the power of the father in the house. The first power of the father is coming. First, like I said to you before, the first husband is coming to kill the second husband. משום כך, אישה אינה מתיישבת כרוי בעל שני, משום שרוחו של הראשון דופק בה. A woman who become a widow will have a difficult time to find the real man after that, because the first one is there. ואז היא זוכרת אותו תמיד, also from a memory point of view, from a רשימה point of view, it's not an easy thing. בוכה עליו, she cried for him, או נאנחת עליו, כי הרוח שלו דופק במאה כנחש. It's a physical thing, it's a spiritual physical thing, it's still within her, it will never go away. It's still within her, it's alive. It's alive. ומקטרג על רוח האחר שנכנס בה בבעל שני, עד זמן רב מקטרגים זה בזה. אם היא תקן עד המן, היא סטארט פיילינג. ואם היא העביר את זה שנכנס בבעל שני לאותו רוח שהיה הראשון מבעל הראשון, זה הראשון יוצא והולך לו, ולפעמים שהראשון דוחה את השני, ההוא ונעשה לו בקטרג. Sometimes there is rare situation where the second actually win. What is defined by? Defined by either the soulmate or the second husband is way more spiritual, meaning he's less selfish. Level of selfishness make you connecting or not connecting. Level of what the size of your yamaka doesn't do it. How good is your tzitzit? Doesn't do it. How good you put your tefillin? Doesn't do it. How selfish or not selfish you are? You have to remember that rules because we get misled by many uh, uh, fanatical rabbi who will tell you, ah, yo, 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 kasher, kasher, speak lashon but you have to eat kasher. You, you use the mouse only for what's going in. What's coming out, don't worry about it. Not true. Not true. You have to be careful. 
how you speak, לשון הרע, זה חמור, זה not good, be careful, be careful how you treat other people, if you eating not kasher, you're hurting yourself, if you speak לשון הרע, you're hurting your soul, you're eating their soul, and you're hurting all the people listen to it, you kill three people, here at least you kill yourself, ברוך השם, do תשובה איזה זה, but לשון הרע, every everybody, you cannot go to a Jewish wedding without לשון הרע, you can, what are you going to do? Sitting there and eating the, the, the meat and cutting the meat. Oh, I remember that groom. <laughs> I remember that bride. <laughs> and you start to talk. Lama? Kach. That's who we are. Baya. Baya. So, מי שלוקח על מנד אומר שהם נכנס לים, כשנושבים ברוחות חזקות, בלי חבלים, לא יודע אם יעבור בשלום, הוא יתפר בתוך התאומו. So you take a widow, you have to understand what you're getting into. I'm not against widow, if there is widow sitting here, or listen to me. Not against, I'm just sharing information which is important to share and uh, it's important to know that, that information that uh, Debbie is already standing. So it, it's a sign for me. Just, just one more thing, one more thing I need to share. I, I didn't even finish this part, but I knew it's going to take time. It should be a lecture by itself. Uh, this is a lecture just by itself. So many details. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. So many things I want to share with you, but I can't share what I want. Okay. Last thing, last thing. I know, I know Debbie, I know it's late. Last thing. Studuiz, big question that um, unfortunately exists in, uh, in the world right now. And one of the worst sin that exists, not just for... Uh, 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 Jewish people, that sin has actually exists also for non-Jewish people because there is something called, I don't know if you know, Sheva Mitzvot B'nai Noach, I don't know if you heard of that, Seven Mitzvot B'nai Noach, uh, vital right now, working on actually, hopefully it will happen, depends on the investment, the money, the tzedakah we're going to raise, to get actually Sheva Mitzvot B'nai Noach, that will be available book for the whole world, so they will know it too, because the, the Jew have to make sure that everybody knows those rules, so adultery, okay, cheating on the, cheating, On each other. Cheating on each other becoming unfortunately, I hope you don't know about it in, in New York, you should not know what's going on and I don't want you to know, but it's become become a problem, become a big problem in New Jersey, in five towns, I'm sorry I'm not trying to insult, it just bothered me since I moved to New York about it, it become a thing that it's okay. And uh, I want to read that part about it because that's one of the things that is the most dangerous, you know, for your soul, אוקיי? Okay. יש אחרים, there is others, אשר נעשו שבני אדם הטריחו את ריבונם, the people who make God work harder, I mean, it doesn't mean God work harder, but it's a word, ומיהם, מי שעשק אשת חברו בסתר או בגלוי. A man who's taken the girl or the wife of uh, his best friend, ואותו הילד שנולד להם, and the child that been born from that situation. I don't know if you know what the child has been born, if you know the name for it, you know the name? Ah, you are, you are so smart, you see? You all know it. How come you know it all? I mean, should I think something about you? What's going on? Okay. What's the gematria here? This is 80 together, so that's 40, that's 7, that's 200, what do we have? What do we have? 287, right? 287, with the word itself, it's called plus 1, that's going to be 288. Okay, we're going to explain in a second. There is 10 sefirot. You don't have to memorize that, my friend. Don't worry about it. 10 sefirot is 10 dimension of how the light of the Creator comes from above to below. It starts from Keter, okay? I'm not going to write all the sefirot. And it ends up in Malchut. Okay? Malchut is the 10th. Keter is the first. What is sefirot? Sefirot, basically... The Creator is only spiritual, we are only physical, I mean, we are mixed. So to get all the spirituality all the way down, it's just to go to something called filters and call Sefirot. Now in each Sefira, we're supposed to correct 32 dots. Or you could call it Nitzotzot, spark. When you take 32 times, what? Somebody is guessing already, huh? Time 9, what do we get? What do we get? Two ideas. Two ideas, very good. Mamza. No, not you, I mean, the, the, that's what we get. <laughs> Mamza. So we get Mamza. Now, if you look at the Torah, if you look at the Torah, how many generations a Mamza cannot bother Ka'al Israel? 
עשרה דורות לא יבוא בקהל ישראל. Now we understand why, because he has to climb all the ten sefirot until he become there. What is a bamzer? I mean the most famous bamzer, who was the most famous bamzer, who know? He created a religion. The most famous bamzer who created a religion. A Jewish bamzer. בדיוק, ישו. ישו was, unfortunately, he was ממזר באונס, meaning it wasn't choice. She was raped by a Roman soldier, the Brayta. The Brayta thinks that the Catholic Church should not know about it, but actually they do know. And then he was growing up with difficulty, you know, accepted, not being accepted, difficulty. Good boy from Brooklyn, studying yeshiva, good rabbi, you know, but unfortunately, the issue with this rabbi is rabbi. The reason they mention him in the Gemara is only because they mention his rabbi. They don't mention him. They said that this rabbi was too meticulous. It was way too meticulous, and it's an example for us not to be kabdanim. Kabdanim meaning meticulous on our student. <laughs> Why am I telling you all this mamzer thing? To create a mamzer, what does God have to do? He has to create a soul. Look what it says. These bodies not agree from above. So those ashukim that was made, was made in such a way, it seemed not fair. Why is it not fair? That's one of the things that's not fair. What is their fault, the mamzer? What is the mamzer for? What is the mamzer for? I remember one time a gentleman came to see me. I said, I'm, I'm dying. So I'm bad. Wonderful guy, wonderful guy. I mean, people come to see me because, you know, I look at their face. If they cheat, they didn't cheat. So he sit with me and I look at his forehead. I say, just remove your hair for a second. And he, oh, that's what we saw. So, oh, Hashem. so what's going on? Are you in love with a married woman? I said, yes. We closed the door. I talked to him. Wonderful guy. Again, perfect human being. Just have an issue. I said, did you do it yet? Because you, you have signed that you didn't do it yet. So I didn't do it yet. So I said, listen, you need to understand. Sometimes you get in love with a married woman because your children are soulmate. Your children, her children and your children are supposed to be married to each other. And that's the connection you feel. You can help it. You cannot help it. You have, you have temptation. And the temptation is coming from a holy place. Just don't know. You have to leave it for the kids to with each other. Sometimes you've been in another lifetime with them as a soulmate. And this time you have to learn to be away. Sometimes you were supposed to be with them in another lifetime as the best soulmate ever in the best life. But you have to wait this lifetime. So when you understand Gilgulim, when you understand reincarnation, you absolutely start to understand how to get better. But it doesn't mean get better than my life get better. Get better meaning that I get better. And that's the tough one. We all like to... Makes your life get better, but we're all not happy when I need to be the one who get better. So with Bamzer, okay, everybody come in front of God and cry. It's so different people die. The children by Tinok Ben Yomoshadin. אני בן יומו שהייתי, said the children that died that we spoke before, how can you judge them? How can you judge them? They didn't even did anything. ויש אשוק אחר, אשוק שהוא נקרא ממזר, שנפטר מהעולם, מבדילים אותו ביד קהילת העם הקדוש. Even in the upper world, they don't let him go to the chamber of the holy people. ממזר ההוא אני אבי מסכן, this ממזר, this poor kid, who's poor and miserable, שופך דמעות, he starts crying in front of God. וטוען לפניו, he says, God, ריבון העולם. It's a master of the world. That's what he come after he died. That's what he tell God. If my parents did the sin, Ani is a chova city. What do you want from me? Ma city. What did I do? I did everything perfect. No answer for that. No answer for that. Nobody can tell them a word. That's what King Solomon talked about. So there is different type of ashukim, different type of souls. The one who died when they were young. You need to know. Those babies, when they cry in front of God, for why have you done that? God have to. It's a must. Bring mercy to the world at that moment. At that moment, the whole universe wash with mercy. The whole universe is washed with mercy. So when I shared it with my family one time, my son asked me, 
So what happened October 7th? Not of baby dying. Not of, a lot of baby dying. And I said, I, I get some information from a lady who lives in London. Hi. And she shared with me whatever I can share. She shared with me that at that day, the attack was supposed to be in three areas. It was not supposed to be just in Gaza. That's what she shared. Don't know if it's true or not true, but that's what she shared. It's true. It's true. I don't know. That's what she told me. She's very connected. So tell me, Leah, if I show you the paper, what, what was supposed to happen, some people become stupid at that day, and it was good for us. Baruch Hashem. Try to imagine if that happened from the north, from the south, from the middle, from everywhere, it would be a problem. We never will be able to co co cooperate with, with, with that. We will not have to shalom. I don't even want to think about it. Sometimes when the baby die, automatically there is no time. The soul go up to heaven, cry. Hashem has to bring mercy on the world. Has to. משום שאין דמעות יוצאות מן הלב כאילו דמעות כי כל בני העולם תמיהים ואומרים הרי דינים של הקדוש ברוך הוא אמתים על דרך אמת and everybody wonder in this world everything has to be honest has to be true אלו ילדים המסכנים שלא חטאו and everybody complain those kids that didn't make a sense למה מתו why they die why you kill them איפה דין אמת שעושה ריבון העולם everybody in this world complain say where is the judgment of truth ואם בעוונות אבותה נסתכלו לעולם למה ודאי אין להם מנחם if you say it's because of their parents that did something wrong, then have mercy on them. You need to know those people who suffer and those people who die young, their tears in the upper world, they are the one who are protecting us. Those baby, I'm, it's not going to make the parents feel better. I just talked to uh, my, <coughs> my brother-in-law just came from Israel. So he was one of the first people to go to Be'eri, to go to all the kibbutzim, and uh, he shared with me the stuff, and some picture that I, I shouldn't even look at it, but Baruch Hashem, it was there. And phew, the story is way tougher than what I heard. And, and he, he was, he, when the attack began, he was there already with the car there and collecting people. מגנים על החיים. מקום יש המתוקן להם בעולם ההוא. They have a special chamber in the upper world. שאפילו צדיקים גמורים, complete righteous, אינם יכולים לעמוד שם. They are not allowed to get closer to dead babies. והקדוש ברוך הוא אוהב אותם ומתדבק בהם ומתקן בהם מישיבה עליונה שלו. God himself study with the Torah. God himself is invited to the chamber. ועליהם כתוב, מפי עוללים ויונקים ייסדת עוז. Very good. ומהו התולת שעושים שם? למה עולים שם? The Zohar is not happy with it. What is the benefit of it? What is this all benefit? Why you, why you bring them there? הוא, כמו שכתוב, למען צורריך להשבית אויב ומתנקם וכן יש מקום אחר לבעל התשובה. The Zohar tell us that there is enemy, enemy in this world that want to destroy. So a lot of time before the enemy want to destroy people, unfortunately babies will die, they will go up there and then they bring mercy to the world. And that's all the operation. It's a very sad story. That's why I say it's not a fascinating lecture tonight. Usually what I do with you, I give you lectures that motivate you, leave you happy. And tonight I give you a lecture which is a little heavy because it has to do with reincarnation. It has to do with things that we need to know. So what I want you to take home with this lecture is when you go into a rough time, there is a reason. There is always a reason. We don't always see the reason. It's very difficult to see the reason because... We live in a body, and the body is limited. I cannot see everything. I cannot hear everything, unfortunately. I cannot. I cannot. But a person who wants an answer and wants to go to the Zohar Mishpatim, okay? To the Zohar Mishpatim, those of you who read Hebrew, go to the entire Saba. It's called Mahamara Saba. It's, it's, it's about 400 pages, and it's everything you ever thought about. Every issue you ever had with God or with the world that seemed injustice, I'm not saying you want to find the justice, but at least you're going to have some type of understanding about what's going on. That's what reincarnation come to teach us. To live spiritual without understanding reincarnation, you're not living a spiritual life. Without understanding that why you are here, what you came here to do. Say Rabbi Isaac Luria to Rabbi Chaim Vital. And that's what he told them. If a person come to this world and he doesn't know or she doesn't know why they came to this world and what they're here to correct, this is as if they're not even alive here. You need to know exactly what you're correcting. Not every person corrects the same thing. Some people correct anger. Other person, there is chamisha, there is five things based on the ego. Some people have jealousy. 
some people a hatred. Every person born with a blemish, purposely Hashem put a blemish in us, a problem within us, and Baruch Hashem, through that, you become a star. Not through the good thing you become amazing, through the bad thing you become amazing. Whoever turned darkness into light, that's the person. God is not looking at you how great you did. God is looking at you. Let me tell me about the dark moment of your life. That's what I want to hear. Tell me about the dark moment. How did you do? You did pretty well. That's good. What about the good thing you did? That's wonderful. That I created you to do the good things. But to overcome the bad thing, now that's that's truly difficult. My friend. If there is any question now, I'll give you some time question. Any question you want to ask about reincarnation, I'm here to help. I'm sorry I couldn't share everything. It would take me about two hours. And especially with my storytelling, it's take time. Yes, please. Okay. First, what book is that? And also, why is it then that Kohanim can marry a widow rather than a divorced woman? What's the difference? Kohanim cannot marry. They, they shouldn't marry a widow or, 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 a, or, a, or a divorce or a girl. Right. And, they don't. Don't. and again, if they marry a girl, you cannot. I mean, there is, there is rules on that. It's your kind of rule. They're allowed to marry a widow. They, they're not allowed to marry no, a widow. No, no, they don't. 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 It's a different. It's a different. But it's even then, what the Zohar is saying is it's dangerous. Even that is dangerous because we need to see the relationship. So those of you who go to Shiduchim and you like a widow, just ask how was the relationship with her husband. Ask. Very simple. That's a very important question. If they say, exactly, who say that? Very good. Menachem, Elchanan, what's it? Yochanan, Yechiel, something with Chet. I try all the Chet one. Yecheskel. <laughs> the worst is better. You know, see, you got it. He got the whole lecture. He got the whole lecture here. <laughs> What did you want to ask? Yeah, I said that the second uh, husband yeah. uh, doesn't let the woman, whatever, yeah. but how she can get rid of that? No, the depend. Husband. If the first husband, if the first husband is a soulmate, yeah. it's bio. We have a problem. We have a problem. So I, I, I don't know how to say it in a way but that how it will. We know that the first husband was a soulmate. How do we know? Uh, you have to take the second one to know. <laughs> I'm sorry, it sounds it sound really bad.